Welcome to our last lesson in the Advanced Edits and the Guided section, Chapter 6. We're going to talk about Perfect Portrait. Go ahead and select the middle picture of this handsome gentleman called the Perfect Portrait Guy. Go ahead and pick Perfect Portrait. This will open up some steps for you to perform on this photo. And they go from one, enhance the texture of the skin, apply a smart blur, reveal original, increase contrast, add glow, and lastly it says slim. If I see that the gentleman in the picture needs a little bit slimming, I'm going to slim first, not last. So let's go ahead and um, push the slim button here once, once, twice, three times. Okay, let me look at a before and after, see if I didn't overdo it. Okay, this still looks realistic, looks nice. Go ahead and select after only. Then I'm going to scroll back up only to the Enhanced Facial Feature section. The first thing I'm going to do is click this tool called the Spot Healing Tool so it can remove any pimples, blemishes, or some discolorization. Go ahead. I'm going to zoom into the photo a little bit better. Fill screen. And then I'm going to move up so I can see this top area. Select the tool again. Make sure I'm selecting Content Aware, Sample All Letters, Layers. These will probably be the default anyways. And just go. Um, make sure that your brush is a little bit larger than the area you want to take care of. You can press the right or left bracket keys. You can also do it here, but that's very fickle. So I, I'd rather use the left or, bracket, left or right bracket keys. And instantly the um, redness is gone. I'm going to click over here. Oop, that doesn't look good. Maybe I need to go a little bit lower and click in small instead of one big giant selection. Let me get rid of this freckle there, here. And again, I, I pause the video so I can fix more areas in the photo a lot quicker. And I go in the direction of the wrinkle. This photo probably isn't the best, but you do have to work with what you have sometimes to make the best of it. Let's see here, we got a very deep wrinkle. Let's see what we can do here. I may have to make the brush a lot wider. And I also chose a um, the 13 brush, a soft round brush instead of a harder brush. That's just something I saw that worked better for this. Let me pause it. And just so you know, like for example, this wrinkle right here, I went back up and I chose a hard round nine point brush and did that. It did a lot better job than the soft brush. They tell you it doesn't matter, but I find sometimes it does. No, it's just a personal preference. It's up to you. You have the choice. So let me pause the video and make some more corrections here. As you can see, I've cleaned up this wrinkled area a lot. Something else I wanted to tell you, you always want to work from outside in. Why? Because if you have good material here, you can take this good material and work its way in. Um, just a little side note there. And then let me take another look pass here real quick. I could spend all day doing this, trust me. Um, but there's just some quick things I just want to take care of. Usually when you apply a nice little um, softening effect to the photo, it'll clear up a lot of this. So let me pause it again. Okay, and the next tool we would use is the red eye. If we had a red eye problem, it tells you how to use it. Talked about it in the previous lesson. Now we'll use the next tool called Brighten the Eyes a Bit by brushing over them with a Dodge tool. Okay, so you select the Dodge tool. We can see that he's wearing glasses, so it may be a little bit harder. I'm going to reduce my exposure from probably the default 50 to maybe 6% so I can build on each stroke. I want to change it to shadows and just slightly go over the glasses here. Two times, just to make it a little bit brighter so we can see his eyes just a hair bit better. And the next tool is called the burn tool. Um, this is to make your eyelashes or eyebrows a little bit darker so you just go ahead and select the tool. You can select mid-tones. Um, I would reduce my exposure to again. And you'll be amazed at what just a little bit can do. Sometimes you don't think nothing is happening until you take a stand back from it or you know you, you stand back from it and take a look and you'll see that it's working. Just have to trust yourself. Oh, 
Okay. Now we're going to whiten his teeth. So you go ahead and press the toothbrush here. We're going to move down to where his teeth is. And then you would just go over his teeth like this, just like that. Now you can see I have a lot of spill. So you go, go over to the subtract from selection. And you would subtract it from the selection just so you can get it just on the teeth. I'm going to pause to get this a little bit better. Okay, I got it to right about here. So when you're happy with it, you can um, double click on the hand tool to zoom out a little. And we can zoom in again. It's up to you. When you click on this tool, you'll see the marching ants there. Go ahead and say select, deselect, and that'll take it away. Okay, so let me go back to 100%. Okay, let me look at a before and after and see how this looks so far. Wow, look at the difference. Looks a little bit slimmer. Teeth are hair but uh, lighter. The glasses are a little bit lighter. Probably could use some more. You can see the eyebrows just a hair bit more. Wrinkles around the face. Discolorization have been taken away. It's great. Now we're going to go to the next one. We're going to go all the way back up to the top. We're going to apply a smart blur. So we'll go back to after only. Apply a smart blur. This is going to bring up the Smart Blur dialog box. You're going to increase the radius and the threshold until you find just the right blur. The blur, technically a blur should be just um, a little bit of blur where you still can keep some texture. I mean, that's your goal is not to obliterate the texture or obliterate everything because you can obviously see it looks fake. You just want to get away with just a little bit. So we'll pause it to try to find the right one for you. Bear with me. Okay, here are the settings that I chose was a radius of 1.5 and a threshold of 7.1. My quality is high so I can see a better view of this. If you, uh, with the hand here, if you, if you pr press, you'll see the original, let go, you'll see what the blur does. Press, let go. Now, most pictures you want to look at the eyes, but since the eyes are covered by glasses, I'm just looking around here. You can see it does obliterate it, but I think it's a little bit better than the other settings I was trying to find. So when you're happy with, with what you have, go ahead and click OK. And this will apply it to the whole photo. And again, I'm going to zoom in. OK, and then it says Reveal Original. That's the next step. So now we're going to reveal the original. And it says here, the blur brush. For better control, use a soft brush with an opacity set to 50%. Avoid using the blur brush on the eyes and lips. So now, well, we apply the smart blur first. Then we're going to reveal the original photo. And now we're going to paint back in the area that should have the blur applied too. Such as, well, let me go reduce this down to less than 50%, maybe 40%. Okay, and it says use a soft brush. So let me go here, select a soft brush, maybe 19. And then let me just paint back, paint back the blur back in, just a little bit here. If it was at 100%, it would do it all at once. So let me show you, for example, maybe you could get away with it some, but it's better to build up than use a 100% uh, at once. Let me pause this and do it well and then come back and show you the result. The only other thing I would do is I would not do the teeth whitening here. I probably would do that in, um, in the full edit mode which I'll show you how to do later because as you can tell it looks kind of oogie. Okay now if we further go down add clarity by increasing the contrast of the image. So let's go ahead and select after only and apply it. And then we go further down. It says number three, add a some glow to your portrait to give it a glamour effect. Adjust the sliders in the dialog box that open to get that perfect glow. Let's try it. Add glow. And I'm going to move this over to show you what settings I'm moving. See over here? I'm going to move these settings here on the diffuse glow. So let me move this back. Oh, excuse me. Got to get see through the settings myself here. So see, you can see here I added a little bit of glow to it. Okay, now let me look at a before and after and see how well we did. I'm going to zoom in, of course, which will zoom them both. 
Nah, it's not that bad. Here's the before and after. Like I told you, the teeth are horrible. Okay, so from the after and the before, we can see that the slim part, we slimmed them down. We got some of the wrinkles on the neck, took care of some blemishes, lighten the eyes, darken the eyebrows. The teeth, we'll do an, I would do not here, um, but just wanted to show you. And we can tell by adding that little glow that um, it kind of evened out some of the smudges from the other tools. In the next lesson, we'll move on to color and lighting section of the guided edits.